militant Protestants on the march in Belfast. These men are members of the Ulster Defence Association, or UDA, a paramilitary organisation of volunteers who see themselves as the last line of defence for Protestant interests in Northern Ireland. In effect, they're an unofficial army who are ready to take the offensive if they consider that Protestants are being sold out by the British government as part of a political solution to the Northern Ireland crisis. Their emergence on the streets of Belfast must be a discouraging development for this man, Mr. William Whitelaw, the British Minister for Northern Ireland, who, ten weeks ago, was given the job of finding some means of reconciling Ulster's warring communities. Mr. Whitelaw's appointment came after the British government suspended Northern Ireland's own parliament and dismissed the provincial government. Since then, Mr. Whitelaw has in effect been the government of Northern Ireland, and in his ten weeks of office, he's had cause for both optimism and concern. Initial reaction among Protestants to the imposition of direct rule was predictably angry. Thousands of Protestant workers downed tools to march in protest through Belfast streets. After all, the Protestant majority in Northern Ireland had dominated every government and parliament since the province achieved home rule over 50 years ago, and the decision to rule directly from London was inevitably a judgment of no confidence in the Protestants' record. The more hard-line Protestants have called for a policy of non-cooperation with London. Chief among them is Mr. William Craig, a former Home Affairs Minister, who's now come forward as leader of a new right-wing Protestant movement called Vanguard. To Mr. Craig and his followers, the Catholics' demands for a shared in government and equality of civil rights are little more than a cover for the activities of Republicans whose intentions are to break Northern Ireland's links with Britain and force the province into a union with the Republic of Era to the south. At various rallies, with Union Jacks much in evidence, Mr. Craig has called for the preservation of strong and undiluted majority rule in Ulster, and has even suggested the setting up of what he calls an independent British Ulster, rather than accept any arrangement that would loosen Protestant control of the province. There have been reports that many members of the Vanguard movement are closely connected with the UDA, but Mr. Craig denies any link with the military group. Vanguard is purely a political organization of an umbrella nature to bring many political viewpoints together. It has no paramilitary structure. Do you have any association at all with any armed group of men? No, we don't, and all the organizations that are affiliated to us are of a purely democratic nature. So this report, as far as you're concerned, is nonsense? It is nonsense when it talks in terms of Vanguard. But you have in the past, however, said that if necessary, organizations like Vanguard and the Protestant majority would perhaps need to resort to force. Well, we, uh, as an organization, have contingency plans and we have the organizing capability to bring a military force into operation if circumstances ever needed. So is there perhaps some sort of half-truth about this report? I mean, are there, is there a militia available to you in any shape or form? No, uh, not to our knowledge. Uh, I really don't know what the report's based on. I have for some time uh, felt that a number of loyalist groups in the country were doing some basic training and getting ready for the day when things might get out of hand. Under your auspices at all? I mean, is that no, something you, you would encourage? No, although uh, we are now beginning to recognize that it could well be prudent to advance our contingency planning for the day when we might have to defend the democratic rights of Ulster.
this Protestant reaction was no more than the government expected when it imposed direct rule. What's been of more importance to Mr Whitelaw in the last few weeks is the new opportunities that direct rule has presented to Catholics who've been completely divorced from the political system for the past 12 months. In his first weeks, he toured Catholic areas in Londonderry and heard at first hand the views of some of its citizens. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Well, I'd like very much to do that. And you tell some of these people that you hear that. Just, yes. I would love to come Everybody's there. Everybody's welcome in the Craig and... Well, I would love to come there. You just say that. That's very good. What these tours confirmed was the Catholics' total opposition to the policy of internment without trial of people suspected of fostering armed rebellion especially those who were thought to be members of the illegal Irish Republican Army, or IRA. All the internees are Catholics, and it was made abundantly clear to Mr Whitelaw that no political reconciliation could take place until the British government made some move towards their release. In fact, 50 internees a week have been freed since Mr Whitelaw took over. That's over 500 men. Another 400 are still in detention, but their cases are being reviewed personally by Mr Whitelaw, and it now seems likely that most of them, if not all, will eventually be released. Mr Whitelaw has no doubt that his policy will pay off. I wanted to make my contribution to what I believe to be a mood for peace amongst the vast majority of the people of Northern Ireland. I sense it. Uh, people have spoken up against the government. I welcome it. This is my contribution to a lessening of tension. It is also a fulfilment of the promise which the Prime Minister made when we took our initiative uh, last week. But by releasing these internees, aren't you uh, taking a, a considerable risk? I believe in seeking to get back to a normal, peaceful community. Of course there are risks in any action that is taken. But at the same time, I believe the dangers of inaction are far greater. If I am going to appeal to the mood of the people who want peace. This, I believe, is the way in which I should proceed. Uh, I also believe that if you are going to have a normal, peaceful community, it must be based on trust. I am trusting these people that I let out, and I believe they will not betray my trust. But the toughest problem Mr Whitelaw has to face is not internment, but the so-called no-go areas whole Catholic districts behind armed barricades where for the last three years the law of the land simply has not applied. The main no-go area is here in the Bogside and Cregan districts of London Derry. Its 30,000 inhabitants call it Free Derry. They're ruled by the IRA who man the barricades and who can call up gunmen within minutes if British troops venture too close. Free Derry is in fact a state within a state and as it's one of the most sensitive areas in Northern Ireland, Mr Whitelaw has had to tread carefully. Clearly, he cannot allow the law to be flouted indefinitely, and yet any attempt to impose it by force could lead to a pitched battle between the IRA and the British Army, which would be certain to result in many civilian deaths. It's the continued and apparently unchallenged existence of the Catholic no-go areas that most incenses the Protestants. They argue that they've been on the receiving end of most of the bombings in the last two years, and that as long as the IRA have protected bases like Free Derry from which to operate, there's no hope of stopping the violence. The rapid emergence of vigilante groups like the UDA is a sure indication that Protestant patience is wearing thin. If the Catholics can have their own areas and their own private army, say the Protestants, then so can they. In the last four weeks, contingents like these have been drilling, training and setting up practice no-go areas in the Protestant districts of Belfast.
The UDA have demanded that the British Army move into London Derry and smash its way into the Cregan and Bogside enclaves. If the army doesn't do it, they say, then they will, even at the risk of the worst intercommunal violence that Northern Ireland has yet seen. officered by former professional soldiers and says it has 25,000 men between the ages of 18 and 40 ready to take up arms at a moment's notice. Another 7,000 are said to be in training and if necessary a reserve of 50,000 could be called on. There's no way of checking the accuracy of these claims but even if they're exaggerated threefold they still represent a considerable force. We asked one of its officers what the UDA was trying to achieve. The new area has been erected in this area <coughs> as a protest against the no go areas in Londonderry and the no go areas in certain parts of Belfast and also to the lack of security for the innocent people of this country. But, but these security, security forces, forces have a very difficult task in Northern Ireland. Aren't you just making their task even more difficult by having this area? We understand that the troops are getting a bit rough, but we feel that it's the politicians who are putting barriers in their way, not us. We feel that the, poli that the politicians were to stand up like men and get rid of this scourge out of this country and get rid of these people who are bombing and killing and murdering every day in the week, that uh, the country would eventually get back to a semblance of normality. It's been said that you might make some of these no-go areas permanent. What sort of conditions would have to apply before that happened? Well, if the law and order situation deteriorated and uh, signs were to indicate that Ulster was going to be shall we say, handed to the enemy, then we would make not only certain areas of Belfast, but Northern Ireland as a whole, a no-go area. You're doing it. So far, the British Army has treated the UDA with caution. It stood by and allowed the setting up of roadblocks and barricades, much as it allows the IRA to do in the bog side. But the difference here is that the troops always insist the barricades come down again when the UDA exercise is over. The army has not tried to disarm the volunteers, which would be difficult anyway, since the UDA's weapons are held by its individual members and not in arms dumps. And there's been no attempt on the part of the authorities to interfere with the UDA's secret assault courses, ambush drills and unarmed combat training. What the security forces in Northern Ireland now fear, but must seriously consider, is the possibility of being caught between two fronts, the IRA and the Protestant UDA. There is little they or Mr Whitelaw can do to prevent this happening. All they can hope for is that recent concessions, like the phasing out of internment, will weaken the support the IRA receives in the no-go areas and thus create a new climate in which sensible discussion can replace senseless confrontation. But even here, 
Mr. Whitelaw has little room to maneuver for any suggestion that he's preparing to negotiate, even indirectly with the IRA, would only intensify Protestant hostility. The period of Mr. Whitelaw's rule has not, of course, been devoid of violence. Indeed, after a short honeymoon period, the bombings and snipings which have become a normal part of life in Northern Ireland were resumed at much the same level as before. 52 people killed in the first 10 weeks of direct rule, compared with 73 in the 10 weeks before, and 260 bomb explosions since, compared with 290 before. According to one interpretation, the IRA bomb outrages are deliberately aimed at provoking a Protestant backlash. This would obliterate the peace initiatives being made by Mr. Whitelaw and convince Catholics even more of their need for IRA protection. Ironically, it was one vicious, tragic incident in all this violence that set in train one of the most promising movements towards peace. On May the 21st, Private William Best, a young British soldier on leave from his unit in Germany, was arrested and executed by the IRA in Londonderry. As the IRA have been killing British soldiers for the last 15 months, there seemed nothing to make this crime different from the others, except that Private Best was a Catholic and a local boy, and had actually been out the night before his death stoning British troops. The murder provoked an angry reaction among some Catholic women in Londonderry, who saw it as a senseless killing of one of their own kind. Four women formed a peace committee within Derry and quickly gained support from many Catholic wives. They demanded the IRA cease the indiscriminate shootings and give the ordinary people a chance to work for peace. I personally would have taken action earlier I was looking for a lead. It wasn't actually brought home to me until this young lad was shot. A neighbour of mine. Night after night, I used to ask myself when I heard of different kilns, irrespective of who they were, how many more innocent lives are going to be taken before this is going to come to an end. Is this the United Ireland? Is this the new Ireland we want? Is this justice? To me, this is not justice. And if this is the Ireland that the IRA want, I don't want any part of it. That is the answer, that people want to stop to this violence, this killing. The IRA claim that they are doing this on our behalf. I can assure you, I have never given anybody the authority to kill another person. Only three weeks have passed since Best was killed, but in that short time there seems, on the surface at least, to have been a remarkable change in Catholic attitudes. Peace was the theme of this open-air service organised by Catholic priests in Londonderry two weeks ago. It was attended by 7,000 people. We come together to pray for peace 
and the peace of Christians. But it's not just in public demonstrations like these that the new Christ mood can be seen. There have been Catholics political developments too. The, the Social Democratic and Labour Party, or SDLP, the main Catholic party which withdrew from Northern peace. Ireland's Parliament last year, put out a statement calling on its supporters to cooperate fully with Mr Whitelaw's administration. And there's been further encouragement in the decision of the official wing of the IRA to observe an indefinite ceasefire throughout Northern Ireland. Unfortunately, this has not been matched by the provisionals who've said their campaign of violence will continue. The question now is, can the Catholic parties like the SDLP exert enough influence to isolate the gunmen? We asked Jerry Fitt, the party's leader. Well, what we have done, I think we have pointed it again in the statement this morning, we have pointed our complete dissociation from those who would engage in this campaign of violence. I know my own constituency of Dachan and West Belfast and other constituencies throughout Northern Ireland, and I am absolutely convinced that there is a deep, long, set yearning for peace in these areas, and I have absolutely no doubt that the men of violence will in the long run be defeated by those people. Yeah, the bomb did go off on the day that you called for peace. Isn't it now really an out-and-out -out fight between you and the IRA as to who controls the Catholic This mind? is, in fact, what we were determined to do, to point out once and for all to both communities in Northern Ireland that this is a very clear-cut decision. The IRA are trying now to wage their campaign and to win it by violence. We believe that it can be won by peaceful and political means. There is absolutely no doubt that we are in a headlong confrontation with all men of violence be they from the IRA Republican side or from the Unionist extremist side. That most ordinary men and women in Northern Ireland do want the violence to end cannot be doubted. These Catholic women presented Mr Whitelaw last week with a petition calling for peace. It contained over 13,000 names collected from the no-go areas of Londonderry. That's nearly half the population of the Craigan and Bog side. A similar petition, raised by women in Belfast, contained 50,000 names. Mr Whitelaw has reason to be encouraged. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've come here to do a job on behalf of the British government. I've come here to do my best to enable this community in Northern Ireland to find the way forward for themselves, which they have a very good way forward, in peace and reconciled to each other. That is the purpose of what I'm doing. If I am criticized in the course of that, well, so be it. But if I have any success at the end, that will be my reward. Well, I was saying that it might appear you are having the beginnings of success uh, with the peace moves. Uh, I having. certainly hope, and I certainly see some signs of a real move towards peace in Northern Ireland. That is what, after all, I've been working for in the last two months, not a very long time, and that is what I shall continue to work for. Mr. Whitelaw set out ten weeks ago to restore the Catholic community's faith in a political future within the present boundaries of Northern Ireland. It looks as though he may be succeeding, but his problem is that the more support he gets from Catholics, the more he loses from Protestants. This march in Londonderry by 10,000 supporters of the Vanguard movement and the UDA was yet another demonstration of Protestant opposition to the Catholic no-go areas. prevented them crossing the bridge to the Catholic enclaves, and so the demonstrators vented their feelings on the troops. What Mr Whitelaw would most like to see now is some gesture from the moderate Protestant leadership, some sign that Protestants are willing to try reconciliation. If he gets it, and it has to come soon, a way might be found towards a better life for all Northern Ireland's people. If he doesn't, then scenes like these could at best be a prelude to a long and violent summer, and at worst, to a bloody civil war.